After a hiatus of some time, we're back from Assembly Hall for IU Sportcom. Jimmy Cavanaugh joined by Will Chuckerman coming to you after an 88-81 victory from Indiana over the visiting Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Will, we saw a pretty good game here today. and It wasn't something that looked like it was going to be that way after the first half. It depends how you look at a good game because Indiana developed a big lead going into halftime, shooting 65% in the first half, 65% from three. They really came out, overwhelmed this Minnesota team, and it looked like they were the number one team in the country again, like the North Carolina game, really. That first half was about as picture-perfect as it got. And no question. Tom Crean talked about them being relentless in the first half in the post-game interview that he gave. And there really was no better word to describe it. Victor Oladipo, Christian Watford, Cody Zeller, you name it, that player was on essentially for IU. Every starter contributed meaningful, uh, meaningful contributions in some way. And when you look at the very end of the first half, firecrackers come out yeah. after halftime. IU hangs 52. You go for half 100 and you see the firecrackers. You might as well go home. There was really no better halftime show than to cap off that first half. Like about, you know? And really, it went downhill from there because IU did not come close to matching that level in the second half. And it was odd because halfway through, it was still a 15-point game, but then about eight minutes to go, IU's in the bonus. They go to the double bonus. They stopped being aggressive. They stopped getting into the foul line, Will, and Minnesota crept their way back into this thing. You, you just mentioned really everything that kind of went wrong for this Indiana team. Minnesota started to press. Indiana really didn't. That didn't bode well for them, and especially because they weren't attacking the zone like Tom Crean talked about in the post game. They didn't attack it properly, and that's something they're going to have to work on because now teams realize, you know, they've got a freshman point guard. B. Yogi Farrell's probably wise beyond his years. He's still a freshman, has some trouble at times bringing the ball up the court. And Jordan Holes really isn't that true ball handler that you want bringing it up against the press. Yeah, and there were just some uncharacteristically bad decisions. Victor Oladipo, with not one, not two, but three fouls on three-point shooters during today's game. Jordan Holes was in foul trouble. We didn't see as much of him as we normally do. And the bench play was really non-existent. Remy Abel, Jeremy Hollowell, and perhaps most surprisingly, Will Sheehy, we're all essentially missing an action today. Will, I don't believe, scored a single point. Looking at the stat sheet, yeah, 16 minutes of play, no total points, only uh, he got two steals, so you do like to see that he did keep up that defensive intensity, and that is something we saw. He did bring something on defense that was much needed for this Indiana team. But getting back to what you were talking about, Victor, we saw it in the press conference. He looked visibly upset that he could have cost his team a victory, and he even mentioned that he nearly cost his team a win. That's nine free throws that Minnesota gets. He had a defensive play in the corner late in the game where he also left his uh, shooter who made the three. So as well as he played, there were some plays on the defensive end that I'm sure he'd like to take back. Yeah, and that's lack of discipline. He said it himself in the post game. And a lot of the other players, Yogi Farrell admitted to it, Tom Crean singled it out, but they didn't have the same tenacity in the second half. And that goes into all facets with this team, I've noticed, Will, is that the intensity they dedicate goes into the defense and the offense and the all-around contribution. One area slips, and the rest of them follow as well. And I really, that seems like what we saw today. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think you would agree with me in saying that it is tough to keep up the intensity in the play that Indiana played with for the first 20 minutes of this basketball game. It's just, I wouldn't say it's unrealistic to say to expect that in the second half, but if you want to be a championship contender, you want to be a top five team, you got to play for a full 40 minutes and kind of stomp on somebody's throat and say, you know what, this game's over. They were up by 23 points at halftime. There's no reason why this game should have gotten into single digits. And to their credit, they did stop the free fall. They stopped the bleeding. The Jordan mm -hmm. Hulls went to the free throw line with a chance to put it away, missed both free throws and then managed to get his own rebound after Cody Zeller did a great job blocking it out. That was the kind of play, the effort that you continue to see. Tom Crean said it best. This team never, they didn't continue to play at the same level they did in the first half, but they didn't stop playing hard. And you saw that right down at the very end. And those are the things with Cody Zeller you really can't coach. Those are why people say he's got one of the highest basketball IQs possibly heading into this year's NBA draft. Those are the things you can't coach and the things that are invaluable to a team. When Cody Zeller's going for that offensive rebound, if he doesn't get that, Minnesota can tie the game with a three-point field goal. 
it's, it's as easy as that. I thought Cody Zeller's play overall, they got him involved early, was good. It kind of waned a little bit in the end of the first half because they were up by so much they didn't really need to play him. But Cody Zeller's play at the end of the game is huge. Yeah. And let's get back into that. You said Cody Zeller potentially going to the NBA after this year. Victor Oladipo beginning to look that way as well. 20 points, 6 rebounds, 8 of 10 shooting from the floor. He's beginning to look like a first-round draft pick if he leaves this year. He has a year of eligibility left. But if he continues to play this way, we may not see another season of Victor Oladipo in Bloomington. Unfortunately, that may be the case, and you've got to praise him, how he's been playing on the offensive end. We mentioned some of the miscues on defense, but for the most part, his defense was spectacular tonight. Or this afternoon, 12 o'clock game. It catches you a little off guard. Noon games are always weird. And yeah. That really was the case here today. Obviously, IU plays their best half of basketball in the first. The worst we've seen in some time in the second. Will, that being said, what's your takeaway here? Because obviously, at some point, water has to reach its level. Yeah. IU at least comes out with a win. That's something, isn't it? Yogi Ferrell said it in the press conference, a win is a win. And I think that's what, if you're an Indiana player, an Indiana fan, someone looking at this team, you, you have to take wins in the Big Ten as you get them. 3 0 in the Big Ten. Not many teams can say that so far this season. And Minnesota was on a roll coming into this game, just having demolished Illinois at Illinois. So. I'll take yep. it as that. It's a little discouraging, like we talked about, how the caps off they the let Minnesota get back in that game, but they stopped the free fall, and they were able to hold on, get a tough, well-earned victory. As we look ahead, IU hosts Wisconsin coming up next. The next action will be at Assembly Hall. Well, Wisconsin, as of right now, is putting a beating on Illinois. Uh, what can we expect from the Badgers and the Hoosiers in that game? We're going to have to expect this Indiana team to work on their half-court offense, really look to develop Cody Zeller, get him involved, because as we know, Wisconsin's going to slow the game up. Bo Ryan is notorious for playing his style of offense, his style of defense. In Indiana, Yogi Ferrell, Jordan Holes are really going to have to do a good job of setting this team up in the half court, getting Zeller and Watford involved down and early and often. We'll worry about that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But for now, IU moves to, like you said, well, 3-0 and in conference play. Not a bad start. And against the Minnesota team that beat them last year in Assembly Hall, IU manages to hold off a win, go to 3-0, and 1-0 at home in Big Ten play. Will, any final thoughts before we send this baby home? Final yep. thoughts are this Big Ten, like we talked about, is going to be a very, very good conference. Minnesota, as you could tell, I mentioned the North Carolina game. You can tell that Minnesota is maybe a step or two above North Carolina in the fact that they were able to come back and make this a game. So don't count out Minnesota. It's going to be a real tough game when Indiana travels later in the season to the barn. Uh, no, no sure things on the road to the Big Ten, to be sure. That's another story for another day. As of now, we're finished here from Assembly Hall. For Will Chuckerman, I'm Jimmy Cavanaugh saying good night. Travel well, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.